This came to my attention. I don't even want to tell you the explanation the team gave me as to why the foam is floating above the beer. We restored the natural laws of physics, so all is well. We can get back to business. We can talk about all the progress since last year's I.O. Last year at Google I.O., we announced Google AI. It's a collection of our teams and efforts to bring the benefits of AI to everyone. Imagine if you are hearing impaired and you're relying on closed captioning to understand what's going on. This is how it looks to you. On a Danny Ainge level, but Don't he's above the Colangelo level. In other words, he Don't understands enough to... Let's see how that can work, maybe in YouTube. Not on a Danny Ainge level, but he's above the Colangelo level. In other words, he understands enough to... You said, you said it was all right to lose on purpose. You said it's all right to lose on purpose. In fact, we can even apply machine learning to a 200-year-old technology, Morse code. Hi, I am Tanya. This is my voice. I use Morse code by putting dots and dashes with switches mounted near my head. Another product which we built from the ground up using AI is Google Photos. Every single day, there are over 5 billion photos viewed by our users each and every day. So we want to use AI to help in those moments. You went to a wedding, and you're looking through those pictures. We understand your friend Lisa is in the picture, and we offer to share the three photos with Lisa, and with one click, those photos can be sent to her. Or if you took a picture of a document which you want to save for later, we can recognize, convert the document to PDF, and make it, make it much easier for you to use later. These are special purpose machine learning chips. These are driving all the product improvements you, you're seeing today. And today, I'm excited to announce our next generation, TPU 3.0. Yo, Google. Kevin. Kevin, that was great. But we haven't made Yo, Google work yet, so you have to say hey. Hey, Google. Google. Hello, Google. Hey, Google. Now you won't have to say hey, Google every time. Check this out. Hey, Google, did the Warriors win? Yes, the Warriors won 118 to 92 last Sunday against the Pelicans. Nice. When's their next game? The Warriors' next game is today at 7.30 p.m., where they will be playing the Pelicans. Great. It's going to be fun to watch tonight. Hey, remind me to find my Kevin Durant jersey when I get home. Sure. I'll remind you when you get home. It's not a simple area, but one step that we've been working on is something we call Pretty Please. Hey, Google. Talk to Voicetron. Daddy, you forgot to say please. <sighs> OK, Google. Please tell me a story. Thanks for saying please. With new voices for your assistant, continued conversation, multiple actions, and pretty please, AI is helping us make big strides so everyone can have a more natural conversation with their assistant. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. People are anxious to stay, to stay up to date with all the information out there. They have FOMO. We think there's a chance for us to do better. We've been talking to people, and some people introduced to us the concept of JOMO, the actual joy of missing out. You know, apps can also help. YouTube is going to take the lead, and if you choose to do so, it'll actually remind you to take a break, where we provide parents tools to help manage kids' screen time. Another area where we feel tremendous responsibility is news. First, keep up with the news you care about, Second, understand the full story. And finally, enjoy and support the sources you love. Our AI constantly reads the firehose of the web for you, the millions of articles, videos, podcasts, and comments being published every minute and assembles the key things you need to know. 
and a truly great video experience. This brings you all the latest videos from YouTube and around the web. What we're seeing here throughout the app is the new Google Material theme. The entire app is built using Material Design, our adaptable unified design system that's been uniquely tailored by Google. Here we're using the latest developments in natural language understanding to bring together everything, from the solo movie trailer to news articles to quotes and from the cast and more in a fresh presentation that looks absolutely great on your phone. We know context and perspective come from many places, so we show you tweets from relevant voices and opinions, analysis, and fact checks to help you understand the story that one level deeper. I can follow publications like USA Today by directly tapping the star icon. And if there's a publication I want to subscribe to, say the Washington Post, we make it dead simple. No more forms, credit card numbers, or new passwords. Because you're signed in with your Google account, you're set. And now for the best news of all, we're rolling out on Android, iOS, and the web in 127 countries starting today. Then welcome to Android. And the first striking thing you'll notice is the single clean home button. And the design recognizes a trend towards smaller screen bezels and places an emphasis on gestures over multiple buttons at the edge of the screen. So when I swipe up, I'm immediately brought to the overview where I can resume apps I've recently used. I also get five predicted apps at the bottom of the screen to save me time. Now, if I continue to swipe up or I swipe up a second time, I get to all apps. And if you prefer, you can also use the quick scrub gesture by sliding the home button sideways to scroll through your recent set of apps like so. You can see the new simplified volume controls here. Uh, they're vertical and located beside the hardware buttons, so they're intuitive. But the key difference is that the slider now adjusts the media volume by default, because that's the thing you want to change most often. And for the ringer volume, all you really care about is on, silent, and off, like so. And you'll notice that when I rotate the device, a new rotation button appears on the nav bar. And then I can just tap on it and rotate under my own control. It's pretty cool. If you turn your phone over on the table, it automatically enters Do Not Disturb, so you can focus on being present. No pings, vibrations, or other distractions. And with efforts in Android Oreo to make OS upgrades easier, Android P Beta is available on Google Pixel and seven more manufacturer flagship devices today. The cameras in our smartphones, they connect us to the world around us in a very immediate way. So we asked ourselves, well, what if the camera can help us here? You open the camera. You You instantly, you instantly know where you are. No fussing with the phone. You, you, all the information on the map, the street names, the directions, right there in front of you. Notice that you also see the map, so that way you stay oriented. Uh, you can start to see nearby places, so you see what's around you. And just for fun, our team's been playing with an idea of adding a helpful guide <laughs> like that there. <laughs> so that it can show you the way. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> Pretty cool. Now, enabling these kinds of experiences, though, GPS alone doesn't cut it. Copy and paste from the real world directly into your phone. Now, fast forward to 2018, and the Google self-driving car project is now its own independent alphabet company called Waymo. <laughs> ride hailing, logistics, personal cars, connecting people to public transportation. And within a matter of months, we reduced the error rate for detecting pedestrians by 100x. This is what our car sees before we apply any filtering. Now, driving in a snowstorm can be tough because snowflakes can create a lot of noise for our sensors. But when we apply machine learning to this data, this is what our car sees. We can clearly identify each of these vehicles, even through all of the sensor noise. Welcome to I.O. 2018. Please enjoy, and I hope you all find some inspiration in the next few days to keep building good things for everyone. Thank you.